Give to the World Ministries welcomes you to another teaching by Ralphina Dotson. Ralphina Dotson is well qualified to share the message you're about to hear as she lives the principles she teaches daily. As you listen, we trust this message will encourage you, help you grow and develop into maturity as a believer in the kingdom of God. The word you don't know is the word that cannot help you, and the word that doesn't take root can never bring a harvest. Let this message take root in the ground of your heart as you listen to it over and over and take notes. Receive this message. Receive your harvest. Well, praise God. Hi, how are you today? I'm just so grateful to be with you today. And I give God praise for the privilege of being able to spend this time with you and to encourage you in the things of the Lord. We are in a very, very serious hour and time. We find ourselves dealing with all kinds of dilemmas and catastrophes and overwhelming conditions of fear and anxiety and stress. And, and we, we need to know that God has already been prepared, prepared a way for us. He has prepared a way for us. And so um, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 I just feel so good um, uh, about the fact that the Lord made provision for us. Uh, and I said 2 Corinthians chapter 2, but I meant to say chapter 3. And I want us to go there because it's a, it's a place where it reminds you, it, there are scriptures that kind of click you into thinking and help you understand what God has been saying to us. Um, here we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and uh, we say, um, let's start here. Um, let's start here at, at verse 7. Now, if the ministry of death engraved in letters and stones the covenant of the law which led to death because of sin came with such glory and splendor that the Israelites were not able to look steadfastly or steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory. You know, I, don't, I, I, I can't describe how when, when the things happen to us and it, it changes our countenance, it, it should change our attitude, our feeling, our thinking, but we have to have an experience, a personal experience with the Lord. We just have to have it. We can't, we can't uh, pretend like we know God or pretend like we've experienced him or, uh, or, or give testimony to someone else's testimony. It's a personal thing. And the Lord wants us to be evidence of that. And in this particular scripture, it talks about how after Moses had been in the presence of the Lord, his countenance was so different and so obvious that the children of Israel could hardly look at him. And they were fearful of having to speak in their own behalf. So they asked Moses to speak for them. I had an incident uh, years and years and years ago. I was in a, a place up in Colorado and uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, I was up in this place and um, up there for a specific thing. I was up there for a music competition. I, at that point in time, I was trying to do music and I wanted to sing and, and I wanted to be a part of um, the things that uh, the music industry was about at the time. And, and so I was up there trying to prepare myself to compete so that I could get um, someone to hear me and to uh, receive a my gift and, and, and offered me an opportunity to, to do music and help pay for it. I was looking for a record deal. They, that's what the, one of the prizes was for this competition. And so I am, uh, I'm up in Colorado and I get up in the morning and uh, they have this list, all these names of age groups. So I'm in a certain age group and <clears throat> I'm doing a certain kind of thing. I'm doing vocal. Uh, they had instruments, they had uh, groups, they had uh, children, all that kind of stuff. And, 
And, and, and they had these different places where you go to compete and they had judges sitting there to wait to tell you whether or not you were going any further. And uh, I came out on this balcony of, of this kind of big, 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 big kind of a bunkhouse kind of place. It was, a, it was a lodge, really. Everybody had their own room and everything, but there was this huge porch around this level and I was on the third level up. Huge, huge porch. Uh, and it was a kind of a just just a landing that I could come out and look out at the sky. And uh, I was in Colorado. I had never been to Colorado. There were these mountains around, and I was just awed at the mountains. And I was standing there, and it was about five o'clock in the morning, maybe four thirty. Was just becoming dawn. It was just coming out of darkness, and all of a sudden, I saw. The mountains, the grass, the trees, everything that was natural around that place in that lodge out in the woods where we were, I saw it take a giant deep breath. It was a huge upswing. The mountains seemed to get bigger. The trees got taller. The grass seemed to puff up. Everything took this deep breath and then sighed. Now I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't tell anybody. I mean, I guess I could, but it was so odd, inspiring to me. I couldn't talk about it. <clears throat> and when I saw this, um, the scripture came to me: the whole earth is yearning, waiting, yearning for a manifestation of the sons of God. And it seemed like the earth was just taking this deep, sad breath about what they were looking at us there trying to perpetuate our own opportunities, our own, our own um, ministries, our own ambitions, our own stuff. The earth was like telling me, you're here for the wrong reason. You are here to get famous or uh, get an opportunity to sing or whatever it is you want to do. But that's not what God needs from you. you. He needs for you to manifest yourself as a, as a son, a, a, a daughter of God in the earth. And so it, it changed my attitude about being there. It, it caused me to think now, as you say, well, Sister Ralphie, nobody saw that but you. I don't think anybody needed to see it but me. I was, I was the one there on, with the wrong concept of, 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 um, of intention. But Romans 8.21 says, the creation itself will also be freed from its bondage to decay and gain entrance into the glorious freedom of the children of God. The, the creation was subject to frustration and futility, not willingly because of some in, intentional fault on its part but by the will of him who subjected it in hope. Everything around us, everything, a part of God's creation, everybody, every, every, everything, everything that you see was designed by God to manifest itself so that his glory could be seen and his, uh, his intentions could be manifest in the, in the earth right now. Everything has been perverted, so you know 99% of the things that you see are not so that God gets glorious, so that the person or the people or the it uh, comes away with the ability to pat itself on the back. But we must have an awakening. We got to look back from our memories. We got to come to a place where we can see where we've come from so that we'll understand what God needs now. This... Um, this pandemic and the hours that are surrounding all the sadness and grief that's been imposed on the people all around the world. This has been, we've opened this door so openly. We've just swung the door wide open. We, we, we take part in absolutely everything, but take part in the things that glorify God, take part in the things that please God, take part in the things that he said are necessary. We must have an awakening and look back and find the memories 
that we have that remind us of how faithful our God has been. And we've got to start looking forward. We've got to start looking to the tomorrow. You know, I talk about the hindsight, the insight, and the foresight. Well, the hindsight has been, what, what, what happened to me? How did I get here? How did I get to this point where I'm loving God or say I'm loving God? How did I get to the point where I was willing to give up my ways? You know, you have to give up your ways. You can't just do God any kind of way. You know, I think about all the years I heard people say, you know, when I first got baptized in the Holy Spirit and I heard somebody say, oh, it don't take all that. And, you know, over the years, I come to the conclusion that it takes more than that. It takes more than that. It takes more. It, God wants all of us. He wants all of us. It, well, he wants all of our being, all of our, all of our thoughts, all of our desires, all of our talents and gifts. He wants us to give them back to him so that he can use them, so that he can anoint them, so they can be useful. The whole earth is yearning, waiting for a manifestation. The whole earth is yearning, waiting for a manifestation of the sons of God. The whole earth is waiting for us to start to look like what God intended for us to look like so that its understanding would come. You know, I'm a part of the, uh, what, what they call the ecclesia. But I want you to read this scripture because I guess this scripture is one of the scriptures that I've read probably more than any other scripture. I've read, um, and I say I've read it more, but I think I've talked about it more. And every time I talk about it, it seems like it becomes, it comes bigger in my sight. It becomes bigger to me. It becomes more serious to me. It becomes something that I have to say over and over. This is the scripture in Ephesians 3 chapter uh, chapter uh, 10 or uh, chapter 3, verse 10. And this is the Amplified I'm reading at it. And the, the King James says, this to this intent, the manifold wisdom of the church might be made known. Of the church might be made known. The church, the manifold wisdom of our God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. God wants you to be evidence of the power he has and the wisdom he has and the multifaceted ways that he has created everything so that it works according to his plan. But the Amplified says it this way. So now through the church, through the church, that means through the people that claim to love the Lord. Now, don't get your confusion on your denomination. We're not talking about your denomination. We're talking about the people of God who have received the calling and accept the assignment, the Great Commission, for us to go into all the world. Now, what we've done is we've gone into the world and we've called, called, said, called people, get, caused people to seemingly get saved, but we haven't got the people delivered. They're not manifesting the things of God. They just call themselves saved because they go to church. It says, now through the church, us, the people that claim that we love the Lord, the manifold wisdom of God in all its countless aspects might now be made known, revealing the mystery to the angelic rulers and authorities in heavenly places. When we come in the scene, when we wake up in the morning, the supernatural realm needs to know that there is an opposer to all evil and darkness awake and that person, that person, that opposer has the ability to undermine every plan, every evil plan, scheme, scheme, plot, ploy, work, strategy of the devil. We are those people that can show how God intended for us to be. Now through the church, get yourself in an attitude that I represent the ecclesia, the set apart ones. I'm a part of the church. The manifested, multifaceted wisdom of God. So through us, this is what people, is, the, the people of the, well, not just the people, but the spirit realm needs to see the multifaceted wisdom of God. He's not deceived by anything. He's not overwhelmed by anything. He's not shocked 
by anything. He knows something before it happens. He's already made provision. You know, the Bible says he, he will supply all your needs. He knew what he was saying, what your needs were going to be. He made sure that in his, in his uh, reservoir of, of blessings, the need that you would have 50 years later, it would already be a part of his, of his uh, arsenal. He'd already have it prepared. It's already there. He's already done it. It's already prepared for you. So he's the manifest wisdom of God in all his countless aspects. I mean, he's a, we talk about what he is. He's the, the, the alpha. He's the omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the, he's the best. He's the, he's the first. He's the last. He's everything. I mean, there's nothing that did, he hasn't encompassed in his being. And he says, we might now be made known and so that we can reveal all the questions and, and all the mysteries are now laid open. We've laid them open so that you can see what the truth is. To the angels and the angelic rulers and authorities in heavenly places that do not serve his plan. We are fearful of everything. We're fearful of sickness. We're fearful of death. We're fearful. God says, God didn't, God said, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. We get scared about everything. We, we are affected by everything. And it's made so that uh, to look like we should be afraid because our concept of who we are and who God is to us and who we are to him is not clear. You don't realize he has equipped you with the ability to resist the enemy's plans. And because you resist, the plan don't work the way the devil planned. Because you resist. We had a sister that we called yesterday, or day before yesterday, two or three days ago. And she says, I got to go take this test. And I think it's my son and da 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 so I decided, I said, well, what are you going to say? The Bible says, what you say, whatsoever you say. I said, what are you going to say? She said, I don't know what to say. I said, say, I refuse to be COVID positive. My body is not going to entertain this germ. And he said, Mr. Ralph, there's so many people dead. I know, I know. But at some point in time, if we just rise up, it wouldn't be so many people. I think about all the ways we, we spend our time entertaining ourselves and doing stuff. None of it includes God. And then when it's time for us to stand on what he says, we don't have no confidence in it because it didn't work for somebody or it didn't. And, and some of you need to be aware of something. Sometimes people uh, aren't, aren't, aren't as anxious to keep struggling and suffering as you want them to. I had a, a incident with a young lady and the young lady was a member of a church I met up in one of the northern states and uh, she was a beautiful girl, gorgeous girl, sweet, sweet girl, loved the Lord. But she'd had issues with her whole body, her whole life. And every time she'd have an episode the people in the church would rally real strong around her and she'd recover. And uh, I got a phone call from one of some of the people in the church and they said, Sister Alfina, she passed away. And I thought, oh my gosh, we've been fighting for her for years now. I had been involved in the pray, praying and assessing in, in her behalf for years. And they said, oh, she's gone, Sister Alfina. And, uh, and they were all so sad. And so I went before the Lord and I thanked God for the time that I got to know her and meet her and everything. And, and I said, but Lord, everybody was praying for her. Why didn't she come through? She was a young girl. She was in her 20s. And the Lord said, I didn't call her. She called me. I didn't call her. She called me. Sometimes people have plans you know we have plans for people to live forever but the, the the book of time doesn't necessarily have that and so we have to believe he said that he's he's ordered our steps he's counted the hairs on our heads he knows everything about us and so we're under the assumption that what we are do is this and we should have this and we should have that but when we don't get it we blame god 
but we're not with God all the time. That's scripture that touches my heart every time I hear it. Every time. Every time I hear it. Every time I hear it. Every time I hear it. It says, I, he who dwells. That's what it says. He who dwells in the secret place of the most high. God, th there's a place that we can dwell. Now dwell. People, people ignore that. They, 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 uh, they, they want to say, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But you have to dwell there. You have to live there. God has got to be the, your start and your finish. He's got to be what you do. You've got to be what you say. You've got to be how you live. Now, I turned it into a first person singular. I first, this is Psalm 91. Turn there. Can you turn? Turn to Psalm 91. I'm turning. Here we go. And, 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 and I'm going to read it in the Amplified, and then I'm going to read it in the, um, the first person. This is uh, my personal ch translation because I found that um, what God wanted us to do is to claim the word so that it applies to us as a being. We read it sometimes as though it's, it's about other people. The word of God is personal. It's to us. So here it reads, it says, he who dwells in the, under, uh, in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty whose power no enemy can withstand. He who dwells in the secret place. Well, here over here, I changed it around so that it applied to me. Because I dwell. In the secret place of the Most High, I will abide under the shadow of his almighty hand. Now, the abiding and the, and the dwelling means that you don't have an alter ego that goes and does something else with the time that you have. You, you, you're constantly pursuing something else, and then, you know, when you got trouble or it's a Sunday or a Saturday, whichever day you... You worship and you consider your Sabbath, whatever it is. Any other time you're doing other things. You you play. I remember when I was uh, in the airport years ago, and I was I, I was being stranded. Uh, the the flight was delayed because of snow and cold, and they had to clean the the wings and do all that kind of stuff before the plane could take off. And I was sitting there and I was talking to this man and his flight was going to another place. And so he got up and he said, well, I don't know how long you're going to be here. I've been here about five hours. He said, so I'm hoping that they'll let you uh, get off and get back home soon. I was up in Colorado. I was in the Denver airport and he handed me a sud Sudoku book. He said, well, play with this. It's fun. He said, and it'll keep your mind occupied. You won't get bored and discouraged. So I took this Sudoku book from him, and it was a little puzzle-like book, you know. It's got squares, and each square has got nine squares in it, and you're supposed to be able to line the squares up according to number and find all the numbers. And, and you know, it would seem like it was so, it was, all, it was just so fun. And I was working it, and I was flattered that I was so good at it. I could do it so fast. I thought, oh, yeah, I'm going from... Square to square, I'm doing it so fast. Oh, look at you, Ralphina, you pretty good. I got home that night after the horrible flight, late, late, before I went to sleep, I pulled that little Sudoku book up and I started playing a few more times. Just go around, around, do, see can I get to level 10 or 11, wherever it was, I started on level one. Let's see can I get to 10 before I go to bed and everything. And so I got to the point where I was playing this Sudoku book every day. Never had no incidents of life that I did something absolutely every day except pray. So I'm doing the Sudoku, so doing the, and I get to the last page, and I think, oh, I've run out of my Sudoku book. Game, I can't play no more. Went to the Walgreens to get something, batteries and something else, and there on the counter was the Sudoku books. And I thought, oh my goodness, and I got picked it up, and some kind of way it slipped out of my hand, and I caught it, but I caught it with the front down. And the back of it said, diabolic, addictive, brain, 
gelatinizer, fun for all. Diabolic, first word, diabolic, evil. Addictive, meaning it starts something and triggers something in you where now it's like you have to do it. It's like you un under its control. It's, you're in some kind of bondage to it. Gelatinizing, gelatin, gelatin. I looked up that word. It means like jello. Your brain becomes like jello. And you don't even know it because you're having fun. I thought to myself, I thought, Ralphina, you've got to become more aware of things around you and think differently. You can't take everything. I took that book from that man. I never even thought to wonder what kind of spirit he had and who he was. He might be in the airport for one reason. He wasn't going nowhere. He was just sitting there waiting. He was on assignment. He was some kind of person on assignment to get me to take this book so that I'd be caught off guard and receptive because of his tone. He sounds so friendly. Don't believe every smile. You know, when I was leaving home and my son was leaving home, my son was going overseas to play ball. And I was standing in the airport with him and I was trying to think things to tell him. I said, son, I said, I want you to remember everything glitters not gold. Don't you get caught up with stuff. Don't you let the people have you all just make you think it's just so wonderful and you so wonderful. I don't care what they say around you, what they do around you. Everything that glitters, everything that's shining and sparkling in your eyes, it's not gold. Every smile don't mean I love you. So don't be someplace thinking that because somebody's grinning in your face that they care about you and that they won't entice you and lead you into something that can cost you a segment of your life you can't get back and that you regret until your death. And I said, and every goodbye is not gone. So don't think because you don't see nobody looking around and watching you that somebody's not. Somebody sees you. Somebody's watching the way you respond, watching the way you talk, watching the way you treat other people, watching the way you handle the things that come into your possession. You have to be accountable for yourself and you have to think for yourself. And I, I thought about that. This whole world, dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Oh, there ain't no fun in there. Oh, that's a lie. Oh, that's a lie. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We can have so much joy dealing with God and doing things his way. We'll finish later. <laughs>